The Quincy are the polar opposite of Shinigami, a race of spiritually aware humans that are able to manipulate the spiritual energy in the world, otherwise known as Reishi, and absorb or bend it to create spirit weapons. However, very rarely is a Quincy born that instead of being able to take in power, they give power out to those around them. Yuhaba, son of the Soul King, and one of these special Quincy, after much experimentation, is able to bestow upon his fellow Quincy the power known as Shrifts. And in this video, I'm going to take all 27 of the known Shrifts in the Bleach series and rank them from weakest to strongest, not the Quincy's. What this means is the Shrifts or Quincy powers will be scaled against each other without considering the power of their chosen Quincy, and instead they'll be judged on their utility, versatility, and overall ability to overcome the other abilities below it, until only the most overwhelming, unbeatable Shrift is left standing. With that being said, make sure you leave a like on the video, and if you enjoy content like this, hit the subscribe button as well. But most importantly, thank you for watching. Before we begin the ranking, there are a couple things that need to be properly explained now in order to save some time later. Starting with what exactly a shrift is. Another name for sacred letter, a shrift is the name given to the epithet corresponding to each Sternritter's particular ability. When promoted to the rank of Sternritter, a Quincy is allowed to drink from Yuhaba's blood and has their soul engraved with the initial of whatever power he chooses to bestow upon them. Yuhaba can see in advance which shrift a Quincy will receive and therefore specially selects the most ideal candidates to empower with these abilities. Unlike a Shinigami Zamp Pacto, a Quincy's final transformation, also known as Quincy Volstandig, usually has little to no ties with their chosen shrift. However, there are a select few Quincy whose shrifts allow for special unique transformations that alter the Quincy Volstandig to better fit that specific ability, so these transformations will be considered as they are merely considered a shrift's full potential. But these are the only exceptions. And okay, that should be it. On to the first on the list. The Shrifts beginning with the letters K and N, owned by the Quincy's KG9 and Robert Akatrone, have never been revealed. Sternritter K is essentially just a robot and uses his robotic body to fight, and although Sternritter N has somewhat of a unique Quincy Volstandig, named Grimaniel, that seems to increase their speed, if at any point either of them did use their Shrifts, it was unclear. They sit at the bottom of the ranking, or if it makes you happy, pretend they just don't even exist on the list. Sternritter Q, Berenice Gabrielli's Shrift, The Question. By objecting to an opponent's moral philosophy or character, the Quincy is able to paralyze them in her dialogue tree until the debate is overcome. To give an example for a little bit of a better explanation, when facing Kenpachi Zaraki, Berenice attempted to question Zaraki's murderous intentions. If he understood the dangerous path he walked down and could possibly comprehend the gravity of his bloodlust. The intention being, by locking Zaraki in this battle in the intellectual marketplace, they'll be stuck unable to battle until they're eventually worn down and mentally beaten. While if you are a weak-willed person or just caught off guard and alone, I can see where the shrift might trip some rookies up, but to be fair, even if Berenice's opponent wasn't Kempachi, it doesn't take a genius to figure out by ripping this Quincy's throat out and stop her ability to, you know, talk. This shrift becomes ultimately useless, or you can really just plug your ears. One of the two. A shrift owned by another one of Kempachi's early victims. Sternritter R, Jerome Guzbats, The Roar, allows the Quincy to transform his body into a large, feral ape-like form. Not only is his physical strength increased, his vocal cords are significantly grown allowing Jerome to release an erupting sound wave that, depending on how close an opponent is, can terribly cripple or even kill them. Despite being lethal at close range, any long-range fighter or character with a little bit of speed could dismantle this shrift with little to no effort. Exhibit A, Kenpachi did it. 
The Iron is the shrift owned by Sternritter I, Kang Du. This ability allows the Quincy to completely coat their physical body in hardened iron, durable enough to withstand most, if not all, damage. Kang Du is shown to coat partial parts of the body, but can also completely encase himself in layers of iron. It was shown able to handle sword strikes from Hitsugaya Toshiro, and also shatter his frozen arm by turning it into iron. It was cut through like a stick of butter, however, by Jugram Hashwalt's blade after it was empowered by his own shrift, the balance, which we'll get to later. Pretty straightforward with this one. Sternritter P. Meninia McAllen Shrift, The Power, grants the Quincy superhuman strength at any and all times. With no need for activation, Meninia is easily able to pick up large buildings and throw them, cause tremendous damage to her enemies with punches, or even push them through multiple gigantic structures. The Quincy will also be able to drastically expand the size of their muscles in order to add even more power to their hits. The Power also also seems to increase its user's durability, as Meninia was mostly unscathed despite taking damage from a newly evolved Ichigo Kurosaki. It's a pretty basic, yet incredibly useful shrift in most melee situations. However, the more complicated and supernatural shrifts clearly outrank this in utility. The Yourself, a shrift owned by not one, but two Quincy's the Lloyd brothers, each holding a different side of the shrift, despite the concept being mostly similar. The Yourself allows its chosen Quincy to transform themselves into the physical likeness of another person. Both Royd and Lloyd were subconsciously imitating each other from birth, which is what made them nigh indecipherable from each other. Royd's version of the shrift allows him to not only steal and imitate the person's appearance, but completely copy their personality and memories in order to flawlessly mimic their target. While Lloyd's version, after transforming into their opponent, is able to perfectly copy their power level and moveset, becoming a clone of their entire fighting style. Both sides of the shrift have their own strengths and weaknesses. Royd's version, although allowing him to completely impersonate his opponents, still forces him to rely solely on his own strength in battle. However, it seems if Royd gains memories of certain magic, such as Quincy spells that can be replicated just by the knowledge of them, those powers can be copied as well. Meanwhile, Lloyd's version lets him completely match an opponent toe-to-toe -to -toe in battle. But as Kenpachi Zaraki shows in his fight with the Sternritter, if you're able to surpass your limits, and reach a level of strength higher than what was originally copied, the opponent can best the Quincy as they're unable to grow any further than the point the target was at when the mimicking began. While it's easy to see where the shrift could potentially trip up a lot of people, any fighter with a little bit of willpower and the ability to adapt can best a mere copy of the original. The Overkill is the shrift given to Sternritter O, Driscoll Birchie, acting similar to the Moxie ability to put it in Pokemon terms. After every single kill the Quincy performs, Driscoll increases in strength and Reishi level. Although the power increase isn't specifically stated or scaled, after 1,000 Shinigami were slaughtered, Driscoll was leveled up enough to overwhelm 9th Division Lieutenant Isagi Shuhei with little effort, although that might not mean much. The Quincy's elevated power level is clearly displayed by his massive high leg file. So large in size, they look more like a giant javelin than arrows. The overkill is a shrift that after many years of war and battle, a Quincy could accumulate so much power, perhaps they could become quite a monster in terms of offensive strength and durability. However, the amount of time it would take to reach that level depends on how often that person is on a killing spree. And on top of that, it's unknown how many bodies they'd even have to accumulate before a decent amount of strength is even gained. And God hope that person doesn't run into a stronger opponent before they reach a relevant power level, because just like Yamamoto shows, you will and must choose your opponents wisely if this is your Quincy Shrift. Given to Lil Toto Lampard, Sternritter G, the glutton gives its chosen Quincy the ability to expand and extend their mouth. 
manipulating it into a large maw with jagged teeth. The Quincy is then able to devour anything they set their mind on, although they may not always enjoy the taste depending on the being that's eaten. A strong downside of this shrift is that the glutton leaves Lil Toto almost always hungry and looking for her next meal. In the original series, this is where the glutton's power ends. However, in Can't Fear Your Own World, the confirmed canon extended light novel, Lil Toto reveals that not only does the glutton allow her to devour anything she desires with little to no consequences, meaning even hollows, which are poisonous to Quincy, only result in a mild stomach ache after being eaten, the glutton also absorbs the abilities of any being that is completely consumed. For example, after devouring Pepe Wacabrata, Lil Toto gained access to his shrift, The Love. Or, after ingesting one of Lolly Ivern's arms, the Quincy was able to generate corrosive poison, just as strong as Lolly's. This addition definitely amps the Glutton's utility and pushes it further up the list than its original main series version. Sternwitter L, Pepe Wakabrata's shrift, The Love, gives Pepe a similar ability to Zamari Roro, Espada 7. Funnily enough, the ability ends up being used against Byakia. By making a heart shape with their hands, the chosen Quincy is able to fire a heart-shaped projectile that, after making connection with an opponent, causes them to fall madly in love with the Shrift's user. Becoming infatuated, the victim follows any and all orders of the user, including attacking allies or fighting against obviously impossible odds. The heart projectile can be powered up and fired as a continuous beam while also making the love's power harder to avoid or increase drastically in size using the ability Love's Kiss. The shrift seems to excessively tie into the Quincy's Volstandig, creating an alternative form named Gudoro. The form speaks for itself. I don't think I need to explain why this is uh, Special. It's, it's pretty difficult to put into words how disgusted I am, how depressed I am. After reaching full potential, the Quincy's belongings, in Pepe's case, his floating basket, becomes unraveled and produces multiple ropes composed of linked hearts that can be thrown at a target. By stabbing that victim, they become completely immobilized by love. The love's fatal weakness is its dependency on its victim's emotions, as the love has trouble penetrating opponents with strong walls around their heart or emotions. This also means being without a heart at all, such as buildings or inanimate objects, are incapable of being infatuated. However, weapons like Zanpakuto's, due to being inhabited by spirits, are indeed susceptible to the love's ability. Sternritter W, Nianzol Weisel Shrift. The wind allows Nianzol to deflect any kind of attacks from a target of the Quincy's choosing. Any incoming offense is bent or moved out of the way as opposed to actually being countered, resulting in any weapons entering the Quincy's target range to twist or contort in the opposite direction. The user does not even have to be aware of the incoming attack making even surprise or sneak strategies useless against the Shrift. The Wind can also be used offensively, as shown when Nianzol points his finger towards an opponent and splits them in half by distorting their body. It is considerably strong in both offense and defensive capabilities, but is unable to stop any attacks that are already inside the Quincy's quote-unquote shield. This is shown when Senjumaru remakes the Quincy's trench coat and the spikes impale his body due to already being as close as can be to the user. The shrift bestowed upon Sternritter Yu, Nanana Najaku, the underbelly, given enough time, allows its user to completely analyze a target's Reiatsu and determine the body's entire distribution of spiritual power. By deducing the target's unique pattern, the Quincy imprints their epithet letter onto the victim's distribution network, causing a grid pattern to appear that exposes weak points within the person's soul. By attacking these quote-unquote holes, the Quincy can increase the size of these weak points, causing Reiatsu to leak profusely from the target, until eventually their levels deplete to a point they can barely retain consciousness. This tactic was even able to take down someone as powerful as Sosuke Aizen after fusing with the Hogyoku. However, its one major downside is its long period of time the Shrift requires before being able to take effect, meaning without proper preparation time, the Shrift is outclassed in most, if not all, combat situations. 
The shrift of Sternritter S. Mask Demasculine. The superstar allows its user to gain a considerable amount of strength, stamina, and zest from the cheers of nearby onlookers or fans. Even just one person's support is enough to push a Quincy past Shinigami Captain level, as well as regenerate any, if not all, damage done to the Quincy before the cheer. Even full organs like eardrums can be healed after being blown, which shows the support from the fans don't even need to be physically hurt. After enough cheering, the shrift grants its user a transformation that not only further increases their power, it links the healing factor of the superstar to the Quincy's fans, creating a cycle of infinite revival for Mask. As now that his supporters also are healed by the cheers, the user themselves will also continually regenerate. This shrift clearly influences a Quincy's Reishi control abilities, physical strength, and durability, as well as their ability to evolve and adapt to conflict, thanks to the almost infinite chance to revive from any defeat. As long as the chosen Quincy has at least one fan to consistently cheer them on, the power-ups can become infinite. I mean, even in canon, Mask was only defeated because he sacrificed James on his own accord and was bested by Renji before he could actually bring him back. The shrift falls short in this ranking due to being completely dependent on A, the user's ability to adapt, and B, it lost to fucking Renji, man. That's embarrassing. Seriously though, anyone with a proper amount of power can overpower both the fans and the user at the same time or before either of them revives, whether through massive large attacks or quickness and speed. Despite its insanely high utility, the superstar can be overcome. The shrift bestowed upon Sternritter Z. Giselle Goel. The zombie allows its chosen user to turn any person dead or alive into an absent-minded and obedient corpse after making contact with even a small amount of the Quincy's blood. As the targets increase in strength, more blood is required to take control of the victim. As such, while it doesn't take much to create an army of mindless foot soldiers with little more than a large splatter, Shinigami captain level victims must be injected into the heart and fully diffused through the body before control can be established. While under the user's control, these zombies can be given simple tasks like committing suicide or turning them against their former allies. Those zombified before actually dying are said to be even stronger than when alive due to being replaced with newly fresh cells upon transformation. This shrift is usually unable to affect other Quincy, but after their death, the user's blood can actually take effect on Quincy. The zombies also have access to all of their prior movesets and powers, meaning Captain Class Zombies or Quincy Zombies can be especially dangerous when using their Zompok Toe or Shrifts. The chosen user can also use the zombie to heal themselves or others using blood or body parts from the taken over victims to replace lost limbs or recover from fatal injuries. This is specifically handy when injuring oneself in order to activate the zombie ability and spread the user's blood around. Its only downside seems to be that this established control over its victims is easily overridden as both Pepe Wakadabra with his love shrift and Mayuri Kurotsuchi's own zombie blood samples were able to cause Giselle zombies to switch sides. The Jail is a shrift given to Sternritter J, Kurge Opie, perfectly fitting into his role as hunting warden during the conquest of Hueco Mundo. By conjuring up Reishi and creating constructs that can forcibly close gateways between dimensions, or just simply manifest a cage if necessary, in order to trap opponents inside said prison. Once trapped, the jail completely cuts off the victim's presence, sealing their Reiatsu within and making them undetectable, even if the victim is able to establish outside lines of communication. Although the victim will be able to hear incoming audio, not a single peep will transmit outside of the Reishi prison. The jail is so effective and durable, 
even a full-powered Getsuga Tensho from Bankai Ichigo was unable to even leave a mark on the prison. The Shrift's most terrifying aspect is its ability to continually exist even after the death of its user. This Shrift can be insanely useful when trying to imprison most characters if able to catch them off guard. Emphasis on off guard though. The jail is also completely useless against fellow Quincy and doesn't offer much utility in actual combat. This is clearly why its chosen Quincy, Kurge, seems to compensate for this weakness by being vastly powerful in all other aspects of Quincy powers. If Kurge could create more than one of these, it'd be pretty OP, but if that was the case, he'd probably just trap every single person he ever fights. So I'm gonna go with one at a time here. The shrift given to Sternritter E, Bambietta Basterbine. The Explode gives its chosen user the ability to create bombs out of manipulated reishi. At first glance, it seems like the user is throwing around pure bombs, but the shrift actually works a completely different way. As explained by Bambietta, the Explode actually turns whatever the user's reishi makes contact with into the bomb, not only giving the ability a larger range, but making it almost impossible to block as whatever object gets put in its way just becomes the explosion itself. The user can cause massive explosions in all directions, which seems to be strong enough to cause lethal blows to anyone caught in the range. Bambietta herself has also been shown to generate pure explosive charges all around her, taking the shape of a giant surge of energy that radiates outward and destroys everything in its path. The bombs also can be given a short delay before actually going off, which means after coming into contact with its target and detonating, the bomb can actually be deflected in another direction if done correctly. The Shrift bestowed upon Sternritter H, Bazard Black, most commonly known as Basby. The heat allows its chosen Quincy to take any manipulated reishi in the area and use it to generate pure flames which can then be launched at the opponent. Although it can be controlled simply with the user's hands and feet, the heat becomes more powerful when concentrated into its user's fingers, generating even more power as more fingers are used for the attacks. Starting with Burner Finger 1, a narrow beam of fire is shot from Basby's finger that can pierce a hole in a person's body effortlessly and even straight through Captain Hitsugaya Toshiro's ice. The speed at which this flame shot launched launches is quick enough to dispatch a Shinigami lieutenant before he could even react. As stated before, with more fingers, the power of flames are heavily influenced. Burner Finger 2 creates two arches of fire that swings into an opponent and causes a giant explosion, burning through Captain Class Shinigami's Zanpak Toe and doing heavy damage. Burner Finger 3 supposedly holds enough firepower to melt solid structures into lava and reduce people to skeletons in moments. As we approach the final techniques, Burner Finger 4 and the Shrift's ultimate attack, Burning Full Fingers, the massive amount of flames created by the user are able to create complicated structures such as a blade of fire or a humongous spiraling cone. When combined with its user's marksmanship and the amount of reishi they're able to enslave, the heat can be a terrifying Shrift that's more basic nature allows it to thrive in a battle setting. It also has a lot of utility in sneak attacks and can be equated with enough precision to that of a sniper rifle. It was even able to muster enough strength to counteract and offset flames from Yujin Jaka, the strongest fire Zanpak toe in all of history. This feat allowed Basby and his fellow Quincy to escape an attack from head captain Yamamoto without too much damage. If it weren't for the more complicated and hacked shrifts, powers like this or the next shrift on the list would reign supreme. The Thunderbolt is an extremely versatile shrift given to Sternritter T, Candice Catnip. By empowering the Quincy with the basic ability to conjure and manipulate lightning, the shrift is commonly used by generating the thunder in Candice's hands and being launched in the direction she points in. The electricity can also be solidified in order to be used as melee weapons. 
and even more powerful bolts of lightning can be summoned from the sky to massively damage entire areas. What makes the Thunderbolt so dangerous is the potential power that the lightning is capable of, shown to instantly slaughter entire groups of unseated Shinigami, as well as incapacitate an, albeit injured, Kenpachi Zaraki. The lightning can also be manipulated to grant the user intense speed, shifting their body with the lightning to close long distances in short time. At the Shrift's full potential, it can be used to take advantage of special attacks such as Galvano Blast or Galvano Javelin, two abilities that use maximum charged bolts of lightning and contain enough gigajoules of electricity to vaporize a struck target into dust. Galvano Javelin was shown strong enough to even cancel out a Getsuga Tenshi from the newly evolved Kurosaki Ichigo, which is no small feat. The Thunderbolt's final attack is named Electrocution, calling down lightning from the sky and generating the user's body as a conduit for an overdriven charge of power. After becoming completely enveloped and surging with electricity, the user can throw it at their opponent in a massive explosion of thunder and power. Sternritter F S notes gifted shrift. The fear is exactly what it sounds like. The power to induce crippling terror into one's victims. In S notes case, the Quincy is able to infect a person with fear by stabbing or even merely grazing an opponent with his thorns of reishi. Once infected with the fear, an opponent gains a deep-seated terror of Esnote, beginning to doubt everything and lose control of all rational thought. Visions of their deepest fears plague them relentlessly, which almost always results in instant death for the victim due to the massive strain it causes on their heart. This fear is actually caused by the black substance that secretes from the Quincy's reishi thorns, which can even be transmitted through objects and the slightest touch. Victims that hold stronger willpower or senses of self will be able to withstand the fear at first, but over time, even hardened warriors will succumb to the crippling horror the fear can conjure. Being able to expose one's deepest and sometimes even unknown fears. The truest form of the shrift is awakened through Quincy Volstandig, bestowing upon its user a special version of the transformation named Tartar Forest. When activated, instead of needing to make contact with the black substance, the fear can spread its influence to the opponent just by them simply looking at Esno. The Shrift's power now able to penetrate a victim's optic nerves directly. In order to ensure sight is established, the user can also create a dome around themselves and their target that surrounds them in multiple gazing eyes to prevent them from ever escaping their sight. And after just one glance, even if the target closes their eyes, limitless fear sets in as terror remains in one's memories and minds and can never be unseen. The fear is very similar to a one-hit kill technique that is pretty inescapable once struck by its effects, let alone if Tataphorus is active. The only things that are immune to the fear are things that are in a state of death, and besides Ruki Akuchki's special case, at that point, most characters have already lost. One's only hope is being mentally strong enough to withstand the fear and eliminating the user before it becomes lethal, which is easier said than done. Now, this is the first instance of a Quincy power not stemming from Yuhaba's influence. Pernita Parnkajaz, due to being the left hand of the Soul King, was born with its power, as opposed to being bestowed a shrift by Yuhaba's blood. The compulsory is the ability to control one's nerves and extend them outside of the user's body, using them to infiltrate an opponent and forcibly control their movements. The user can also use their nerves to cause irreparable damage, almost instantaneously Simultaneously, once invading a target's body, able to warp a person's arm into a puddle of blood or completely cave in and crush the body of an even giant victim. The compulsory is also capable of taking control of inanimate objects with the user's nerves, able to actually change the shape of the ground or nearby buildings and turn them into weapons or giant fists that can attack opponents. If the user's body parts are ever severed, these individual separated limbs can also perform the 
compulsory, and use their nerves to control and render targets asunder. Pernita was shown being able to adapt using information it absorbs from targets that are hit by its nerves, which allow the Sternritter to evolve itself to the power level of Kenpachi Zaraki, or replicate the layer shedding ability Mayuri Kurotsuchi used to combat Pernita's deadly nerves and overcome the prior immunity. Although it's unknown if this is because of Pernita's natural governance over progress, or actually being a function of the compulsory. Because of its intense speed and ability to reduce a target to shreds effortlessly, the compulsory can eliminate most threats before they even know what's happening. Even a monster like Kenpachi Zaraki would have been turned to goop had he not reacted in time before losing his arm to the Quincy. While the nerves can be pushed back by intense Reiatsu or changing the anatomical structure of whatever gets invaded by the compulsory, the largest downside to the power is that when exposed to air, the nerves can cause immense pain to its user. The very first shrift bestowed upon a Quincy by Yuhaba. The power of the X axis was given to Sternritter X and the leader of the Schutstaffel, Lil Baro. Considered the Quincy King's greatest creation, the shrift allows its user to pierce literally anything in their line of sight without the need for projectiles and with no chance of missing. There is no defense for this attack. With enough power and the right weapon, the chosen Quincy will be able to use this perfect accuracy to demolish entire cities or expertly hit a target's vital points from a large distance away. Lil Baro actually handicaps himself in battle by keeping his left eye closed, only opening it and unlocking the full potential of the X-axis when up against an opponent he deems worthy. With both eyes open, the chosen Quincy can actually use his body to quote unquote pierce the enemy attacks, which basically results in the user being able to phase through anything an opponent tries to hit them with. The X-Axis also grants its user a special version of Quincy Volstandig, given the title Jillio. When this transformation is active, the user is in a state of complete spatial intangibility, making them virtually invulnerable to any attacks, physical or spiritual. Attacks can be fired from any of the six holes on the Quincy's Reishi wings, all capable of causing the destruction of entire portions of city. These blasts can also be shot from a long distance, as the X-Axis is capable of creating portals in the air that will teleport the attack to its intended destination. The intangibility of the shrift can only be interrupted by damaging the Quincy's Heilig Shine, or their Halo of Reishi that controls their Volstandig. And due to its supremacy over offensive as well as defensive utility, paired with its destructive capability, it's easy to see why the shrift was considered Yuhaba's magnum opus. Although, when subtracting Lil Baro's godlike powers from the equation, it definitely doesn't hold up to the last couple shrifts on the list. The Death Dealing The shrift gifted to Sternritter D, Askin Naklavar, revolves around the idea of the perfect lethal dose. What the what? hell does that mean? Basically, by ingesting any substance into the user's body, by raising or lowering the amount of said substance required to actually kill the Quincy, the user can allow themselves to essentially become immune to the element. By making the lethal dose so high, any amount of said element would be inconsequential. After taking in enough of the individual substance, the user can then adjust the lethal dose in others within range of the shrift, meaning it can even make others immune to the element as well, or, for opponents, make them lethally vulnerable. For example, if a user of the death dealing ingests an opponent's reishi, the user can not only make the lethal dose of reishi required to kill them so high, a person's attacks can barely affect them, but the Quincy can also change the lethal dose in the opponent, meaning they will eventually succumb to reishi poisoning from their own power. This is because the lethal dose of the ingested reishi for the opponent has been made so low, even their own energy becomes toxic. Vice versa, by raising one's own lethal dosage to an attack, the user can actually begin to heal from any damage taken. The user does have to take the first attack though, because they do have to actually adapt as stated before. But the speed at which the calculations of the correct dosage can be acquired is insanely fast. Askin even claims if only given one minute, 
he can basically make any attack useless. The broken aspect of the death healing comes when the user adjusts things such as oxygen or an opponent's blood, being able to make a target succumb to death from the things that at least used to keep them alive. The Shrift also comes with special attacks that can be used to hasten the process of death, such as Gift Ball, a small, slow-moving ball of poison that's potent enough to make the victim collapse instantly upon contact. The substance contained within this orb can be changed at the user's will, as can was shown using things such as nitrogen, oxygen, or as implied before, even reishi. The range of Gift Ball can be expanded upon using the ability Gift Bad, which opens up a large, darkened circle of influence for the shrift. Everyone within is under the user's complete control, able to have their resistance to any chosen substance lower, causing the poisonous effects to take place on a much larger and faster scale. The death dealing can only be avoided by completely removing the substance or element that the user has adjusted the lethal dose to, and the user's calculated immunity can also be waived if the victim is able to change the adapted property in the slightest way, shape, or form. Any small shift will immediately reset the new element's effect on Askin. However, this weakness can actually be beaten when the death dealing reaches its complete potential. The Shrift's unique Quincy Volstandig, named Hashin, automatically adapts the user to any changes in substance. Meaning, as long as the base of the chosen poison stays the same, i.e. the main structure of the element, the user's adaptability will match any small switch in the said element's properties. This prevents the user from being overwhelmed by any opponents that can rapidly and repeatedly change the nature of their Reiatsu or have multiple different abilities. By removing the user's only weakness, an opponent's only hope is by completely removing the advantage. And if the user has managed to adjust to something critical, like the opponent's blood, that's not something that's so easily done. Or, quite honestly, even possible, unless you're an innovative character like Urahara or Mayuri. And to top that off, Hashin also enhances the death dealing special attacks as well. Gift Ball transforms into new and much more deadly Gift Ball Deluxe, a giant globe that amasses around the user with them in the center. Anything caught within immediately feels the effects of the toxicity, and its power significantly magnifies upon the death of the user. This orb can be even further extended using the ability Gift Barike, which essentially is a domain expansion from Jujutsu Kaisen. Dozens of interconnected spears of light are connected and form a large barrier that Askin claims is impossible to escape from, although it can indeed be intruded upon. And last but not least, the bracelets that appear on the user's Volstandig can also be used as weapons when active. After enlarging and being thrown at an opponent, the ring shrinks in size to accurately impact the particular part of the body that is targeted. Upon contact, all the potency and force of the death dealing is concentrated into this single point and inflicts quote-unquote instant death on that location of the body. Askin claims by targeting the body's most important organs one by one, this way, any opponent that's putting up maximum resistance can surely be dealt with. The only other letter shrift besides the yourself that offers two versions of its apethet. One A shrift obviously belongs to Yuhaba, but the other was bestowed upon the only Quincy immune to the Oshwelin, Sternwitter A, Uryu Ishta. The antithesis is a shrift that is usually only used as a last resort or final attack, as to create the most effective results. Upon activation, the antithesis immediately reverses the conditions of two chosen targets by the user, meaning that if the user is heavily damaged upon the brink of death by choosing themselves and their opponent, the user can completely switch positions with their target, forcing them to take on all the pain and wounds originally suffered by the Quincy. This also ultimately heals the user, assuming the person they chose to swap with is in a healthier condition than they themselves once were. This shrift can be very beneficial against a lot of the more powerful abilities on this list, as regardless of how critical the user's injuries become, they can also be pushed off onto someone else. By explanation of the shrift, theoretically, it could also be used in team fight settings, considering the two targets aren't necessarily specified to need to include the user. 
The only downside to this shrift is it must be used with perfect timing in order to achieve the greatest effects. Too early can open the user up to counterattack, and too late can result in the user dying before a transfer commences. Its amount of uses in one sitting is also unknown. The shrift given to Sternritter Grand Master Jugram Hashwolf. The letter B, the balance, enables Hashwolf to absorb any and all misfortune or bad luck that occurs within the Quincy's range and allows the user to redistribute these misfortunes to others in the area who have experienced good fortune. This usually results in an opponent's ability being completely overridden by the balance, or any wounds inflicted on the user being deflected back onto the person who caused them, described as returning balance to the world. When combined with the spirit weapon Frun Shield, this misfortune can be stored inside the spirit shield and expelled against opponents in order to inflict any damage that may have been blocked or absorbed by the Frun Shield. Even attacks that have already injured the user can be reversed by the shield, making it more a weapon and extension of the balance, rather than just a simple defensive tool. The Shrift is overpowered simply due to its ability to completely negate an opponent its powers or strength, regardless of the power difference between the user and the opponent. Unless the Froon shield can be avoided or the user is taken out in one huge shot, most attacks are just going to be deflected back onto the opponent. Whether this attack be an ultimate defense skill, such as the iron, or something that would inflict a lethal dose like the death dealing, could be considered misfortune and just be redirected away from the chosen Quincy. Meanwhile, the user is free to inflict any additional damage as they see fit. Although, if the user wills it, it seems the scales of balance can be tipped in the Quincy's disadvantage, shown when Jugram absorbs Oryu's misfortune and wounds before passing away. Shrift of the self-proclaimed strongest Sternritter, and my personal favorite Quincy, Sternritter V, Remy Tumu Shrift. The Visionary is the absolute insane ability to turn fantasy into reality. More specifically, anything that the chosen Quincy imagines or thinks of can be either brought into or full-on change reality. For example, if the user wants to imagine an opponent's skeletal structure as being made of cookies, this will actually warp reality and cause this to be true. The user can believe they are impervious and durable enough to withstand all physical damage or even imagine themselves as fully healed if they do get wounded. Elements or substances can be born from the user's mind such as lava, gigantic stone pillars, meteor strikes, and machine gun barrages, or even just straight up opening a portal to the vacuum of space itself. The greatest power the visionary is capable of is actually being able to create life itself. Using the Shrift's ability, the user can clone themselves, which full-on increases the capacity of imagination amongst the multiple Shrift users. These clones are also invulnerable to harm, unless they otherwise forget to imagine themselves as such. However, clones of the user aren't the only thing the Visionary is capable of, as even completely separate and sentient beings can be conjured into existence with their own personalities and abilities, as seen when Gremi Tumu creates the second Sternritter V, Gunail Lee, who is his own entity, carrying his own quote-unquote shrift, and capable of combating both Isane Kotetsu and Yachiru with his powers. With the power of imagination, the chosen Quincy can ultimately bend reality to their liking, being able to completely bypass things like barriers by imagining themselves already inside the structure. Or for more complicated opponents, their powers can be completely thought out of existence or ignored by the user, making themselves immune to said ability. However, the mind, while being a powerful muscle can also easily defeat itself if not given tender love and care. With such an overwhelming upside, the downsides of the visionary can make the users end if not careful. As if the Quincy ever shifts their attention from their current creations or has their train of thought derailed, any currently conjured attacks or objects will immediately cease to exist. Or anything changed or distorted will revert back to normal. The user can only keep their power active as 
as long as it is taking up space in their mind. Likewise, if the user begins to think self-deprecating thoughts, or that their opponent is in fact capable of causing harm to them, these thoughts will ultimately become true, or his anxiety can cause him to forget to harden or defend his body from incoming attacks. At its most extreme point, if Gremmy was to ever imagine his own death, or even think about it in general, the visionary would actually make that a reality and kill its user. So for lack of a better closing statement, we'll default to Uncle Ben here. With great power comes great responsibility. Gerard Valkyrie's innately born ability, the second Quincy power to not actually be a shrift granted by Yuha Ba's essence. The miracle is a natural power bestowed upon the heart of the Soul King, and mostly surrounds the concept of hope and the manipulation of probability. As its name suggests, the miracle allows its user to, essentially, create miracles, or make impossible outcomes become possible if its user is ever put in a situation they cannot overcome. Boiled down to its most basic definition, if the user is unable to defeat an opponent or is dealt a lethal blow, the miracle will immediately make the impossibility of the user winning that battle a reality usually resulting in the user being completely regenerated and powered up to the exact level they would need to be at to overcome those odds. Gerard describes this as bringing life to the thoughts, feelings, and desires of not only himself, but those around him. And according to Gerard, the more unlikely something is to happen, the more likely the miracle will make it occur. It could honestly almost be considered an even more powerful version of the Superstar Shrift, bringing its user back even stronger stronger than before every time they find themselves defeated, except this user doesn't need any external support, only their own confidence. Even simple trivial tasks like the user thinking they won't be able to locate opponents that are hiding their energy can be turned around in the user's favor, and the miracle also endows its user with an extension of itself found in the spirit weapon Huffnum, which, by using the hopes of people all bundled together, can cause despair on anyone who would dare try and snuff out that hope. Without being poetic, this basically means the giant spirit sword is able to turn a small nick on the blade into a significantly critical slash onto the responsible person's body. The miracle is also powered up by those that oppose it, questioning their own ability to defeat the user. By harnessing that fear, the user can increase their size and power proportional to the amount of strength and damage wrought on the user in attempt of defeating them. This is how Gerard Valkyrie obtains what he calls his godly size. The shrift can literally be described as bestowing a person with the equivalent of god mode in any PvP game. The only thing this quote unquote shrift is missing is a unique Quincy Volstan dig. Oh wait, fuck, it has that too? Giving its user the look of a Nordic warrior and granting them even more godly power. This Volstan dig was also shown to have a second form completely enveloping the user in golden energy and recreates the user's body if it is ever destroyed. It's kind of hard to deny this outright outclasses most if not all other Quincy powers. Whether that's unfair or not is really up to you. The shrift of the Quincy King himself, the son of the Soul King, Yuhaba. The Almighty, when activated, splits the user's iris and allows them to see everything that is currently occurring and has yet to occur. Being able to view every single possibility and event in the present to the far future. And rather than just one linear path, Yuhaba describes viewing these futures as seeing individual grains of sand scattered through the wind, each displaying all of the infinite possibilities that can happen. The user can then store all of this knowledge and act in a way according to the best possible outcome for themselves. This shrift basically grants the user Omni Precognition, which is terrifying in and of itself when in the proper hands. But what makes the Almighty even more terrifying is its true power that only Yuhaba can utilize, which is its ability to not only witness every possible future, but outright alter and change it to his liking. Yuhaba most efficiently takes advantage of this ability by setting up traps 
or attacks ahead of time in the future, where he knows his opponents will already be, making it seem like injuries or strikes come out of nowhere or are completely random. But rather, the trap was always waiting in that spot for events to play out exactly as they do. This also allows the user to outmaneuver any countermeasure or strategy opponents are able to come up with before they even think of it, as Yuhaba has already planted the seeds for its destruction preemptively. The shrift even allows for futures in which Yuhaba has died to be altered, shown when 10 years after Yuhaba's defeat, a failsafe attack that would have destroyed Soul Society was placed into the future by Yuhaba 10 years prior, as if the ability to not only know, but change any possible future doesn't make the user even more invincible, the Almighty also gives Yuhaba the power to ally himself with any ability or power he comes to quote unquote know through the shrift. For example, by knowing of Ichibe Hyosube's control over everything black, this power now takes Yuhaba's side, now being unable to damage him regardless of how much power is put into the attack. Yuhaba can also absorb other beings completely through the Almighty, able to consume entities of even higher planes and gain access to all of their strength through this process. The amount of time it takes to fully make the being's strength his own depends on the total difference in power levels. And not a single viewer should be surprised that the Almighty takes the number one spot. But if there are any other rankings that you just completely disagree with, let me know in the comments. Or be nice and just let me know what your favorite shrift is. Thanks so much for watching all the way to the end. If you haven't already hit me with a like, do so. And if you want to see more content like this, don't only subscribe, but check out one of these videos on the end screen here. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.